Man, good morning po. And uh, it's uh, good uh, hearing uh, Christmas songs. And it's the time of year when uh, it's, uh, everyone seems to be just in a joyful mood. And uh, it's, it's a blessing because I remember when we first came here in, uh, to Cambodia, every December is just like any other month of the year. It's really quiet and nothing's happening. But now you go around, you see Christmas decorations. Though we see many, uh, most of them are, you know, Santa Claus and all of these things. Um, it's an opportunity for us uh, because the people are now uh, aware of what time, what, uh, what uh, we are celebrating. It's an opportunity for us to really show them the real message of Christmas. And we, we see that they already have that awareness of what Christmas is. We see that especially, I don't know, in other auto shares, but we see that especially in our outreach. Because, you know, December, uh, we can al almost cannot fit in, s in our place anymore. Even the kids know uh, that it's a gift-giving uh, month. So <laughs> yesterday, so surprised that I can't find a place for my car, to, for the car to park anymore because of all the bicycles. And first time people are there, and teacher some now told me, uh, you know, they're expecting gifts this month. And uh, we're sure that January we will not see them again. <laughs> so I told them, okay, uh, <laughs> All right, we're going to feed them in our, Chris, or in our Christmas party, but we're not going to give gifts to everyone. I just, but I took note of those who are, have been with us since the beginning. Uh, we have people there who are, have been there for three years with us, like uh, Ponlu and all these uh, this, this, uh, boys you see here. And I don't know, some of them still cannot speak English. But uh, they're, they're learning. Uh, there are also people, there are kids who have been with us for three years. And uh, pr we praise the Lord for them, and they deserve uh, uh, that as well. So we'll be uh, recognizing them. But uh, those who just came for December, will, uh, I don't know. The, when I saw them uh, yesterday, I, my heart was, uh, you know, jumping out of my chest. Parang laki ng Christmas party na naman nito. Next, talaga, konti lang, kami kami lang uli. Pero... Anyway, it's a blessing. Uh, I hope that those first-time people who came yesterday, I challenged them before Ponlu gave the devotion to not only be here in December, because I was very frank with them. Oh, you're here because it's December again. I hope that I'll still see you in January. I will continue studying with us. So pray for that. And as we are praying to open an English school over there, also in Chanso, pray for that as well. That is uh, for the purpose of helping uh, teachers of Nang and family as well. Because they're teaching English for free now every day in Chanso. Um, but I told them that uh, they should be compensated a little bit as well. If there, are, there are people who are willing to pay for their services. Teaching English, we're going to be open to that. And please pray for those plans we have for the next year. So today, we're going to study again about uh, chapter 8. We're now in verse number 9, and hopefully we'll go through 11 or 12. I really want to take my time in here in chapter 8 because it's really a wonderful uh, chapter, even in chapter 9. When people are challenged through the Word of God, through the law of Moses specifically, but of course it is the law of God, it, come, it came from God, and people are faced with a choice. It's either to uh, respond like her or to be disobedient to the Word of God. And I want to take this uh, opportunity, this chapter, to really challenge us and to reevaluate our relationship with the Word of God. Uh, it's really a blessing for me, especially in our class, because now we're studying in Matthew chapter 6, uh, ch verses 5 down. We're studying about prayer, and, and in our Sunday school, studying about the Word of God. So it's like a complete study. And it's not complete not if we just pray. We have to also read the Word of God. We don't only have to read the Word of God, we also have to pray. It is that relationship we need to have with the Lord. So I would like to ask everyone to stand, and let's read just verses 9 to 12 of Nehemiah chapter 8. Um, let's read it uh, together, verses 9 until 12. Okay, ready? Read. And Nehemiah, which is the Tirshata, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And then he said unto them, Go your way, and drink the sweet. And send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
So the Levite stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for this day is holy, neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink, and sent portions, and to make great mirth, because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning, and as we continue studying uh, chapter 8 of Nehemiah, I pray that you continue to give us more knowledge about it and more uh, uh, insights about the Word of God. And even though we're, we're studying here in the Old Testament and uh, really the response to the law of Moses, Lord, I pray that you give us the principles that are in this chapter and may we be able to apply it in our relationship with you, especially our relationship with the Word of God. May you bless me as I speak. May you be the one to speak through me, the Holy Spirit to move, move freely in our midst, dear Lord, to challenge the hearts of the people and to change us as well, dear Lord. May we be able to glorify you in our study this morning. For all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you very much. You may all be seated. Now, the Bible tells us, and we are all very familiar, that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That is how the Bible described itself. That is how the Bible described the Word of God. And if the Word of God is powerful, and if it is alive, and it is especially uh, effective to those who are saved, especially effective to those who have the Holy Spirit, and to those who are submissive enough when they hear the Word of God, then every time the Word of God is read, every time the Word of God is explained, every time the Word of God is preached, it demands a response from the people. It demands a response to everyone. And it's just not just an amen. It's not just nodding your head. It's not just coming forward to pray. It demands a decision being made after the preaching. Because every time we hear the preaching of the Word of God, every time we read the Bible, when we see ourselves, we, we, the Word of God is also a mirror. When we see ourselves, that we always come short of the standard of God. We always see that we always uh, uh, let down our Creator, our God. We always have to make a decision to change our lives for the better. And if the Word of God is alive and powerful, it must be alive and powerful enough for you to be able to respond to the Word of God. And now we are in this uh, uh, part of the chapter, here in chapter 8, when people are responding to the reading of the Word of God, when people are responding to the explanation of the Word of God. How did they respond? And this morning, I want to study as... Um, we still have uh, uh, until 10 here. I want us to see how do we respond to the Word of God. And the first time we preach about the Word of God is how people uh, love the Word of God. They want to hear the Word of God. They, they ask people to read the Word of God to them. And then uh, the, two weeks ago, we studied uh, their respect for the Word of God. Last week, we studied people who are uh, able to explain the Word of God. Of course, people who are able to understand it are only people who are saved. And all those people who are able to explain it are people who can understand it. And last week, we studied that uh, those people who are really called by God to expound on the Word of God, to preach the Word of God. But all of these, reading and, and people explaining to us, will be in vain if, not, if the Word of God will not work in our hearts. We can have the best preacher here. We can uh, um, uh, invite the best speaker or, or maybe uh, uh, Spurgeon can rise from the grave and preach to us and, and, and say all those eloquent words and how he explains the Word of God. And it all, all will be for nothing if we will not respond to the Word of God. And the Word of God demands a response from the people. Hindi po Word of Hindi lang po historia ang Word of God. The Bible should not be treated just as a story. Or a collection of stories na, uh, that, that when we're telling it to our kids or in the Sunday school, this is a good story, that, and Jesus Christ, and Christmas story, and how Christ was born, how Christ died for us. All of these are good things, but all of these are pointing towards something sa ating buhay. Principles, we're learning uh, things that we're seeing in our lives na kulang sa buhay natin, and that demands a response from us. A response from us. Now, let's look at ourselves and... And see how we respond to the Word of God. Because people respond differently to the Word of God. And one response that is very dangerous for believers, and it can happen even for believers, is to respond with pride. Sometimes we listen to the Word of God, we read the Word of God, we see things that are not according to what we want, to what we believe, to what we have, how we've been living. And instead of obeying and submitting to it, we respond with pride. And we say that uh, maybe that's outdated. 
Maybe that's only meant for them, not for us during this time. Maybe this, maybe that. We try to work our way around it and try to compromise in order for our way of life not to be changed at all. But if you really have the Holy Spirit, it will not sit right with you. If you really have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will keep on talking to you while the preaching is going on, while you're reading the Word of God, will keep on telling you what you need to do in your life to be in accordance to the Word of God. And then we have to respond to Him. Now, how do the people respond here? Let's go straight to our first point here. They were sorrowful. They were sad. They mourned. Okay? Here in verse number 9, it says, And Nehemiah, which is the Tirshata, or uh, the governor, or the leader during those times, uh, during this time, pa, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the Lord. Remember, these days are supposed to be holy because this is a day of feast unto them. They're supposed to be rejoicing, eating, drinking, all of these things because it's holy unto the Lord. And just one thing, a side note here, even in the Old Testament, the Lord always sets aside days for Himself. Holy days unto the Lord. And during the, uh, not holidays, okay, holy days unto the Lord. And during those times, the Jews, they have that around, all around their calendars. When people have to be in a, in a certain place, doing a certain thing for that certain day, and pro prohibited to do some things in the holy days of the Lord. And during our time, the holy day of the Lord, or the day of the Lord, is supposed to be, of course, every day, but something that when we come together corporately as a church is on Sundays. Amen. That is a holy day unto the Lord. And even in the Old Testament, holy days unto the Lord are given respect. Okay? Binibigyan po yan ng uh, uh, pagpapahalaga. They give importance to the days of the Lord. Why? Because in these times, if you don't give uh, importance to the days of the Lord, you, you can be punished by death. But today, of course, we're not killing anyone for not attending church on Sunday. But the response here, or the, the thing here is that when the Lord says that this day is for Him, we should give it to Him. We should respect that. We should, uh, we should uh, give our best into that. That's why uh, we, we often hear preaching uh, here in, in behind the pulpit, encouraging us to always be in the church whenever there is a gathering. And that is something that's very important. And this is something that, oddly enough, is being preached throughout the life of a believer and sometimes not obeyed. And this is one thing that is being preached. That's why when the Word of God is being preached, we read Hebrews, we explain to you why we have to be here every time. There is a service, Saturday, Sunday, and if, if we have prayer meeting or midweek service, we explain to you why you have to be here. And it's clear from the Word of God, still most of the time, we compromise, we try to explain away, and we don't respond to the Word of God. That is one way. That is one way uh, where you can resp respond to the Word of God with pride. Well, the Lord knows my situation. Uh, well, the Lord understands my feeling today. I will not go to church, right? And you can never see that in the Bible. The Bible is clear. The holy days of the Lord, we should respect and give it to Him. And, and, and during this time, they're all supposed to be happy, okay? This is a feast of the Lord. But people were mourning. People were crying. People were uh, uh, sad. Why? The, the verse says here, when they heard the words of the law. Simply because they saw themselves uh, 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 in the light of the word of God. They saw how disobedient they were. They saw how uh, uh, really, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, uh, hard-headed people uh, they were. This, this is uh, similar to the responses chapter 1 of ne in, in Nehemiah. When Nehemiah heard uh, about the, the, the wall, or when it's, they, it's broken down and all these things, Nehemiah had a similar response response he rent his clothes he cried he mourned to the lord let's let's uh, revisit that chapter 1 verse 4 to 11 it says here and it came to pass when i heard these words that i sat down and wept and mourned certain days not only for a while but for a few days and fasted and prayed before the god of heaven and I said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandment. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servants, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and and my father's house of sin. We have already studied these verses, but I want to point out here in verse number 5, Nehemiah knows exactly who God is. That's why it prompted this response. 
Okay, Nehemiah knows God, he's a great and terrible God. And if we see ourselves in the light of the word of God, and we see ourselves that we are sinful, we see ourselves that we are, uh, uh, we are undone, and we see ourselves that we are not enough uh, in, in this, uh, when it comes to the standard of the word of God, it should prompt sadness in our heart. Dapat malulukot ka pag nakita mo na, na that you're letting God down. Whenever there's preaching, you see a part of your life where you're not really giving your best. You see a part of your life where you're not really up to the standard of the Lord God. Whenever you see that, it should prompt sadness in your heart. Malulukot ka. Why? Because you are not glorifying your Father. And if you really know God, you really know His attitude towards sin, you really know His attitude towards uh, lackadaisical service, you will be sad knowing that. Why? Because you have wasted a lot of your time, you have not glorified the Lord. You have, you have wasted a lot of time going to the outreach, you're not giving your best, and then reading the Word of God, you know it's not acceptable to God. It will prompt sadness in your heart. And it's okay to be sad after preaching. It's okay to be sad when you hear that you are not according to the standard of the Word of God. It's okay to be sad when you realize that you're sinning before a holy God. It's okay to be sad. That's why these people, they're not just sad. They were mourning. They were weeping. They were crying. They don't have the, the uh, wala silang gana mag-celebrate even if it's a day of feast. Why? Because they read the words of the law and they saw how many commandments of God they were disobeying. Hindi pala kami sumusunod. Ang dami pala namin nakaligtaan. Ang dami namin kasalanan sa Panginoon. They cried. That is how they responded. They cried. They, they saw themselves. We're not worthy of this God. We're not worthy of the blessings. We're not worthy of the things that God is giving me. I'm not really giving my best, although God has been faithful to me. And that should prompt sorrow in your heart. Magkakaroon po ng lokod. It's okay. Kaya ka po minsan may magpo-forward dito. Umiiyak. Why? Because they saw themselves uh, in, 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 in the light of the Word of God. Okay? And, 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 that is, and the Word of God will surely make us sorrowful and hurt us. Why? Sabi, di, sabi sa uh, Second Timothy, uh, 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 it is profitable for doctrine, ano pa? reproof and correction. And where you, when you're being reproved, when you're being corrected, it will hurt. Po ba? Meron po bang napagalitan na masaya pa? Of course, initially, pagka pinag, uh, initially, when you're being reproved, when you're being corrected, when you're being scolded, you will not feel good about it. Okay? Nobody, nobody has an initial response of joy when they're being corrected. And you know what I'm saying, right? For example, you forgot, you forgot something. Uh, uh, you forgot to do something. Even in your job, when you're being corrected by your administrator or your principal, the initial feeling is not really good. Uh, you're not going to, hindi ka magpapa burger pag napagalitan ka. Diba? Uh, you will have this initial response of being hurt. And whenever there's preaching, at tinamaan ka, your initial response is, ouch, masakit. And you'll be sad. Right? Because, it is, uh, it's because the Word of God is alive. It will do something to you. It's either going to give you joy because it's going to confirm what you're doing for God is right or it's going to reprove you, correct you, and stab you in the heart because you know that what you're doing for God is wrong. It will, it will always demand a response. And when the Word of God is working in our lives, we're sure to find ourselves short of the standard that God has given us. Because even if we live throughout our life, even if we read the Bible every day, we'll always see something that is lacking in our lives. We can never be perfect. We can be mature. We can be uh, always uh, uh, trying to be in accordance to the will of God. But there will always be something that will be lacking in our lives. Hindi po natin yung perfect That's why... That's why kahit na mabuhay ka as a Christian for 60, 70 years, you will always see something that you have to improve. And we will only truly be Christ-like and sinless and perfect when we are there together with God in heaven. But now we're not. Always see something that's lacking. Uh, even today in, 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 in this preaching, you, you might realize that I don't read the Word of God enough. Or I don't treat the Word of God res with respect enough. Or I don't really uh, 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 listen to the Word. I don't really try to, to, to listen to what God has been saying to me during the preaching enough. That's why I need to improve this. And then next week, you improve that. Praise the Lord. You come back. You see again something that you need to improve. And every week, every time we, you read the Word of God, every time the Word of God is working in our lives, marami kang makita room for improvement. Kaya nga po, we always have to respond to Him. And, and every time, we are always falling short of the standard of God. Why? Here's the standard. Some, some are verses with the standard of God. Here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. What is the standard of God in the church? Verse 13 says, and, and, and before these verses, God gave, uh, told, told us about the gifts is given to the church. And all of these things are for the purpose of, till we all come in the unity of the faith 
and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man or matured man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God's standard for the church is unity. And I don't know about you, but we're not mind search your souls church to be united matthew 22 37 our god's standard for loving him jesus said unto him thou shalt not thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind search your souls today are you up to this standard do you love the lord your god, the lord with all your heart with all your soul or with all your mind or do you still have reservations and if you're not up to that standard yet, you still need the Word of God. You still need the preaching of the Word of God. What about our overall conduct in the church? In Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 to 23. And this is some, these are verses for everyone. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Are you up to that standard? Are you? Are you really in submission to your husband? Husbands, Love your wives and be not bitter against them. Are we in that standard? Do we really love our wives? Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. And this even talks about our work, to our, uh, our relationship with our boss. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. You know, even your obedience to your boss at work is, is also a manifestation of your relationship with God. If you really fear God and you really know what the Bible is saying, you're going to be obedient to people who, are, who have authority over you. Now, if you're disobedient ka to people of authority, then that means there's something wrong with your relationship with God. Why? Because your fear of God will translate to that. No matter who your boss is. You know, sometimes it's really hard. Lalo na sa atin, bata, uh, kapatid ko pa, bunso pa namin, di ba? I have all, also all the right to not, to, to, to defy her authority. But as long as God, I have that fear of God in my heart, understand that God plays authority for a reason. I have to submit to that. So servants, we have to, to obey our master, what? In all things. Uh, not according to the flesh, but because we know and we have the fear of God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. This is God's standard in the church. Sa lahat po sa atin yan, wives, husbands, children, uh, people who are working, even the boss, if we are doing all of these things and our end goal or, or uh, the beginning and the end of that is God, then we are really up to the standard of God. But the thing is, it's not really happening in our lives. Diba yung preaching kahapon means uh, the preaching yesterday. Sometimes we do good things, but the end goal is still selfish. We we help people, but we help people so that we'll feel good. That we 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 feed children for to feel good about ourselves. Para bang uh, uh, to 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 soothe our conscience, right? We 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 even do things in 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 the church just to feel good about ourselves. Diba? We studied kanina even in praying you can be hypocrites. Why? If you're praying, if your prayer is for your own sake, you're a hypocrite. You're just like a Pharisee. But if what you're doing in your work, in the church, in your family, if it begins with God and ends with God, then that is what the absolute standard of God is. And until we reach that, kailangan pa natin ng preaching. Until we reach that, kailangan pa natin ng Word of God. And we still have to continue to respond to the Word of God. Reading these verses, I'm sure you find something in your heart that is really lacking. Amen. Kailangan pa natin improve. And this ought to bring sorrow in your heart. Hindi yan dapat na baliwalain lang. For example, you, you realize that you don't pray enough. You should bring sorrow to your heart. You know, ah, wala lang. Yung, uh, the other night, we were watching the Emoji movie. And yung bida doon si Meh. Meh. Yung ugali, ugali ni Meh. Walang pakilam agad na get over. Diba? Oh, hindi, hindi ka masyadong nagbabasa ng Bible. You're not praying enough. You're not giving enough. 
You're not really loving the brethren. You don't care. You know, sometimes, and and, and it, it, that is not the correct response to the Word of God. Here in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5, we see how the Word of God, or how God moved in the hearts of these people. Then said, I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. If you realize the standard of God, the holiness of God, the perfection of God, and you look at yourselves, you are really going to cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, I am not enough. Lord, I have not done enough. Help me, and I cannot do it without you. Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to 21. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that, is, that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would not, do, that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. If I, d if I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. This is exactly why we cannot really reach the standard of God. Why? The Bible says, be perfect or be holy for the Lord your God is holy. And, and God expects absolute perfection from us. He knows we cannot do it, but He cannot lessen His standard just because we're sinners. God's standard is still, do not sin. But because we're in the flesh, we still commit sin. Nagkakamali pa rin tayo. We still disappoint God. And this ought to bring sorrow, sorrow in our heart. If it will not bring, make us sorrowful, that means we're not really taking the Word of God seriously. That means we're not really taking the standard of God seriously. We're basically all sinners. Even Paul, who, who has been obeying God uh, since he was uh, uh, saved until, uh, until the day he died, he still recognized the sin in his life, the struggle in sin. That's why he still failed God every once in a while. Uh, God hates sin. And, and, and whenever we are sinning, we are doing something that, uh, that God uh, really hates in his life, here, uh, in, in his being. Genesis 6, 5-6, to it says here, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him and his heart. God hates sin so much that it prompted him to destroy the world, to really kill almost everyone on earth. Psalms chapter 5 verse 4, For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. Pagka po tayo nagkakasala, this is how God feels about them. Isaiah 59 verse 2, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you, that He will not hear. Sin separated us from God. Uh, John, 1 John 2, 15 to 16, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Sin, whenever we sin, it lessens our love for God. Whenever we love the world, it lessens our love for God. And God's, again, as I have said a while ago, God's ultimate standard is for us to love Him with all our being. And whenever we love something else, that means we're not really loving Him 100%. Kaya nga po, ma, 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 you will notice that if you really put much attention on the things of this world, it lessens your love for God. Ipo ba? Kaya nga po, ma, mas mahal natin yung trabaho natin, yung even social media, uh, cell phones, or games, or whatever. It lessens our appetite for the Word of God. It lessens our appetite for prayer. It lessens our appetite for studying the Word of God. Why? Because these things do not go together. And as long as we still give attention to these things, we cannot really say that we love God with all our being. And that is not the standard of God. Uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. And whosoever was not found and written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Sin will make God throw sinners into hell. And whenever we're sinning, this is what we're doing. Something that God hates. And if this doesn't bring tears in your eyes or sorrow in your heart at least be sad about it then you're not really serious about God because you're sitting I'm not saying I'm not saying na lahat tayo ay uh, uh, namumuhay sa kasalanan but I, what I'm saying is all of us commit sin and all of us uh, do something that is not in the standard of the word of God and whenever we come here under the preaching of the word of God every Sunday we realize that 
and it has to bring resp- uh, 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 prompt a response in our heart. Sorrow. Number two, tears are good if it is not greater than the sense of God doing work in our lives. God working in our lives should bring us joy. So first response is sorrow. But the next response should be joy. Tama na tayo, it's, it's correct that we be sad because of our sin. But the sense of us failing God should not be greater than the sense that God is still working in us. Dapat ma-outweigh pa rin nung, nung ma- na-realize mo na nasaktan ako, nalungkot ako, pero mas matindi pa rin yung feeling na nag-work pa pala ang Panginoon sa akin. And because of that, you should be joyful. That's why sorrow should not last forever. And, uh, whenever there's preaching, realize yourself, you cry here, you don't go home crying. You don't spend the whole week still crying. Why? Because yes, you fail God. Yes, you do not, uh, you're not at par with, par with the standard of God. But the work, Lord is working in your life. And that is something to be joyful about. Because if you're not getting hurt with preaching anymore, God is not working in your heart. If you're not getting, if the Holy Spirit is not talking to you anymore, there's something wrong with you. And if you're getting hurt with the preaching, then praise the Lord for that. Okay, be sorrowful, but after that, pray to the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you be joyful about them. Because the Lord doesn't work on everyone. There are a lot of people that the Lord doesn't work on, especially those unbelievers. But we're so blessed that the Lord is working in our hearts. Verse number 10, it says here, Nehemiah 8.10, And then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, Nehemiah didn't tell them that sor- uh, uh, being sorrowful or mourning is wrong. He didn't rebuke them for that. But all he's saying is that don't remain in that state. Now, you realize, okay, okay, but after that, stand up, be joyful, and do something about it. Do something about it. In this verse, Nehemiah sent them home. But, ayusin nyo, maligo kayo, magayus kayo, ah, tigilan nyo yung pag-iiyak nyo. What did Nehemiah say? Eat and drink. That's why it's good to have a good lunch after preaching. Eat and drink. Para ma-recover mo yung, yung, yung kalungkutan. Okay? Uh, do something about it. Not only to feast. Uh, not only did he tell them to feast, but he told them to give to those who are unfortunate. What I see here is that after preaching, it demands not only a response in our hearts, but some action as well. Do something about it. Okay? You're sad? Get up. Do something about it. Uwi ka, uh, pray to the Lord, have a, uh, ha, have a, uh, uh, pray, pray to Him, uh, talk to Him, ask Him for help, and then do something about it. Because you know how many times have we come forward here, cried, ask the Lord for forgiveness. And next week, yun na naman yung iiyak natin, ask the Lord for forgiveness. Next month, yun na naman ang iiyak natin, ask the Lord for forgiveness. That means we're not really sincere in our crying. Maybe magaling lang yung preacher, napaiyak ka. Maybe malungkot lang yung tugtog ni preacher mo, naiyak ka. But next week, yun na naman ang iiyak natin. Why? Because we're not really serious about what we're praying to the Lord. And, and, and this, it doesn't only de- demand uh, that we, we uh, uh, again, uh, that is for the next point. But then, uh, um, after the sorrow, there should be joy. Okay? There should be something uh, uh, that, that will, will, will demand a response. We should, here in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9 to 11. It says here, Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, the selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, Yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, what vehement desires, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Now, sec- here in Second Corinthians, we know Paul's relationship with the well, Corinthian people. He rebuked them a lot. They were sorrowful. He, there's actually confrontation that happened. But then when these people realized their mistake, of course they sorrowed. But not only were they sorrowful, but they, were, they sorrowed to repentance. Hindi po sayang yung iyak. Hindi po sayang yung lungkot. Bakit? Merong pagbabago nangyari sa buhay. And that is what will bring joy in your heart. Pag nagbago ka. But if hindi ka nagbago, there's no joy in that. 
only sorrow. But if you realize that you were sorrowful, God worked in you, and then somehow God changed you, then you will bring joy and praise the Lord for that. That's why not only sorrow, but we should be joyful as well. Pagka po tayo nakikinig ng preaching and God talked to us, praise the Lord for that. Na, nakikinig tayo ng preaching and, 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 and we got hurt because of what the preacher said, accord, provided it's according to the word of God, then praise the Lord for that. I, I said that because, you know, I, I heard a lot of preaching where it's not really according to the word of God. It's just an I'm gonna get you type of preaching. You know, in our, uh, in our seminary, if, if a preacher doesn't like you, he's gonna make a preaching spelling your name. First point J, second point O, third point N, fourth point G. Just knowing that the whole preaching was about you. It's not really according to the word of God. He just wants to see you cry. But there are those kinds of preachers. But if the preaching is according to the word of God, and the word of God is the one that rebuked you, then that's when you have to be joyful and praise the Lord for, gri- for, for that. There's great joy in knowing that God is working in our lives. That means God is not... Of course, God will not give up on anyone. But b- that, that means God really has something for you to do. And God is, is uh, uh, make, making you do something about it as well. And because of that, we should be joyful. Okay? Not, and, and for my last point here, connected to that, God's word must be obeyed. In verse 11 and 12, So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. That is the commandment. That is also Nehemiah's commandment to them. What did the people do? And all the people what? Went their way. They ate. They drank. They sent portions. And to, and to make great mirth because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. Nehemiah told them, go home, eat and drink. Give something to the poor. And that's exactly what they did. Why? Because they understood the words that were declared to them. And the response, the only correct response, all of these things, emotional response, okay, but the end result should be obedience to the word of God. The correct response to the word of God is obedience. The correct response to the word of God is you're really going to do something about it. You were sorrowful, you were joyful that God talked to you, but all of these things will be in vain if you don't do anything about it. Kung, kung yung pinagpe-pray natin last year, yung panang pinagpe-pray natin ngayon, ayusin na pano sa buhay natin, it says something na hindi ka talaga sumusunod. Because the, wor- the work of God is effective. And if we let God work in our hearts, magbabago at magbabago ka. But if you let pride get in the way and not obey the word of God, kahit ilang taon ka pa mag-forward dito, ganun pa rin ang pinang-forward mo. Yun pa rin ang pinepray mo. Yun pa rin ang iniiyak mo. Yun pa rin yung struggle mo. Why? It's not the fault of the preacher. It's not the fault of the word of God. It's not God's fault. It's your fault you're not obeying. You're not really... Because this is where it gets difficult. Obeying the word of God. Listening is easy. Uh, understanding may be easy as well if you're saved and if there's a, a gifted preacher who's explaining the word of God but where it gets difficult is obeying the word of God yesterday we were, we were challenged with our giving what are you going to do about it? are you going to give more? are you going to give sacrificially? Are you going to, uh, have you seen that you're not giving enough for the Lord? by, by enough uh, I mean you're not really giving what the Lord is, has put in your heart are you going to do something about it? Or baka nag, after that, you prayed and then still, um, still cannot do it. Marami talaga pangailangan. Hindi ko talaga kaya mag-sacrifice sa Panginoon. Then that means your prayer was in vain. Diba? Uh, many times we hear preaching, we hear amen in the crowd, we hear people, we see people not, nodding their head. People go, come in front, they cry, they even talk to the preacher. You, you remember the illustration of our pastor when he went to the Philippines, but then will not come back in the afternoon. Why? Because really, nothing really happened in their hearts. They're not willing to obey the word of God. Yeah, sometimes our struggle, our struggle is uh, uh, how many years na tayong Christiano struggle pa rin natin our relationship with unbelievers. Why? Because we're not obeying. Ilang taon ka na Christiano, struggle mo pa rin yung pagbibigay. Why? Because you're not obeying the word of God. It has been your struggle all year after year after year. Your New Year's resolution is the same every year, copy-paste every year. Why? Because you're not really Obeying the word of God. And the challenge here is, are you going to obey the word of God? The people here, here in Nehemiah's day, they heard the word of God. It was explained to them. They understood. They were sorrowful. They were given a commandment and they ob- did exactly what was given to them. Are we going to obey? Kaya nga po minsan, na preach na, the pastors, the preachers talked to us, told us what to do. We're still not doing it. 
That means you're making the word of God in vain. Nothing, nothing is happening in our lives. Yun pa rin, yun yun pa rin. The Bible says here in uh, Luke 8, 11, 28, But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Sumusunod, 2 John 1, 6, And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. 1 John 2, 3, and 4, And hereby do we know, that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. First John 5, 2, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. John chapter 10, verse 27, My sheep hear my voice and I know them, and what? They follow me. If we really are saved, if we really are true sh uh, uh, sheep of the Lord, uh, of God, whenever we, re we listen to preaching, whenever God works in your heart, you're going to obey the word of God. I'm not saying that lagging immediately obey. Of course, there's struggle. Pero hindi naman yung ulit-ulit na lang yung struggle natin. Why? If ulit-ulit na lang yan, that means we're not really submissive enough to the word of God. You know, there's no question that the word of God is true. No question. But we live our lives as if it's not true. Now, some reasons why we don't obey the Word of God, maybe because you don't really believe it. Maybe we just say, yes, I believe the Word of God is really the Word of God, perfect, 100%. But in our lives, we don't really believe it. Because we don't trust it. And we think we know better. And this is, some, this is a point that I want to make. The reason why you don't obey the Word of God is because you think you know better than the Word of God. The Word of God says something, you do another thing, that means, Lord, my way is better. I know what you said in your word, pero meron po akong paraan. I'll do what I want. And I'm sure that I'm, I'm gonna reach the end goal. And then I'm sure you're gonna find yourself failing again and again and again. Why? Because you're not doing it the word of God. Uh, you, uh, you're not obeying the word of God. And another reason maybe, we love ourselves more than the word of God. We love ourselves. We love, we love our friends. We love our relationship. We, we love ourselves more than the truth in the word of God. Why are we not really obeying the word of God? I'm sure the Lord is talking to you and, and, and showing to you the things that you're nearly not obeying sa salita ng Panginoon. And maybe there are things that I said today that may be hurtful for some and if, for, of course for myself uh, as, as, as I was working in this message. But if the Lord has been dealing with that sayo year after year, I think it's time that you, you, you kneel down and pray and say, this time I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to respond. I was sorrowful. I'm happy that the Lord is talking to me, but this time I am going to change. I'm going to do something about it. Kasi wala pong magbabago. Ulit-ulit na lang ang nangyayari hanggat hindi po tayo sumusunod. Ulit-ulit na lang mayayari hanggat hindi natin pinagkakatiwalaan ng salta ng Panginoon. If God said, let go of some things, let go of it. Kahit na gaano ka pa katakot, bitawan yan. And sometimes we think that, God, if I let go of this, I don't know what's going to happen. You, all you're saying is that, God, I don't trust your word. I don't trust you to, 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 to really uh, work in my life pag binitawan ko ito. But then you can never really realize the blessing of God and the work of God in your lives until and unless you take that first step of obeying the word of God. And it might be a struggle. Di po ba? Uh, I'm sure all of us have been through that phase. When we are maybe a relationship or, or a love for things in this world na hindi natin mabitawan, the, the greatest struggle is to really actually let go of it. And when you let go of it, of course it's gonna hurt you. Wala naman pong binitawan or, or something that you love that you let go of, of course it's gonna hurt you. But then, you're going to realize how God is going to replace that with joy that will never leave your heart. Kaya nga po, until and unless hindi po, uh, hindi po natin sinusunod ng Panginoon, ang salta ng Panginoon, nothing's going to happen to us. We're just wasting your time sitting there listening to the Word of God, coming forward and praying, but you're not really serious about it. You're not really going to obey it. So the challenge today is God's Word demands a response from you. What's your response to it? What, what are you going to do about it? Ano yung, ano yung relasyon mo sa Panginoon ngayon? Have you decided that you're going to really do something about it. Obey the word of God. Have you realized your shortcomings? Wag po dating tignan ng ibang tao. Look at ourselves personally. You're not perfect. God is doing something in your life. You have to do something about it. And pray that everyone else will do that. Para, so that makalapit man lang tayo dun sa standard ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. At patuloy po nating hayaan ng Panginoon na mag-work sa ating buhay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. And as we have this 
short Bible study on our response to the Word of God. I pray, Lord, that as we, as we uh, uh, were pricked in our hearts when we saw our shortcomings, and as we appreciate the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, I pray, Lord, that we will be serious enough, we will take it seriously enough, dear Lord, to do something about it. And the struggle, really, dear Lord, for everyone in this room, really, is to obey the Word of God. We know it's true, we believe it's true, but we really just cannot trust it, dear Lord. I pray that you give us grace to trust the Word of God, to trust you and to obey you. And even though it doesn't sit right with us, make us, re Lord, realize that you know better, your Word knows better, and uh, that, that you are going to uh, uh, work things for good if we love you enough and we obey your will, dear Lord. Uh, I pray that you be glorified even in the preaching later and even in the, uh, the things that we're going to do today. For all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.